Hello everybody, welcome to the IMIT YouTube channel. My name is Shubaz Dar, and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Azure Arc uh, sort of deep dive series. Um, so we're starting a new topic within that today, which is going to all be around the Azure Arc resource bridge. In the last episode, we did the demo. Now, we've not got a demo in this episode, but in the last one we did a demo where we onboarded vCenter vSphere, which is really cool, and now we're going to be able to manage all those sort of vCenter um, goodness, we're going to be able to manage all the, the, the virtual machines, all the storage, and all the Azure Arc enabled servers, etc. Um, we're not going to do that in anything in this episode, but in the next episode. So this this Azure Arc resource bridge is a two person, it's a two video sort of topic. Um, in the next one, we'll, we'll do some management of that. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is the Azure Arc resource bridge, is part one of that topic. Um, we're talking about. Uh, as your arc resource bridge, we'll look at system requirements and network requirements in this episode. So let's start by talking about what Azure Arc Resource Bridge is. So it's a prepackaged virtual appliance that's going to run as a Kubernetes-based management cluster deployed on your on-premises infrastructure or your private cloud. And it acts as a core component of that Azure Arc private cloud products. It enables Azure-based management of on-premises resources. Azure Arc Resource Bridge provides a secure conduit between Azure and your on-premises infrastructure. It allows projection of on-premises resources into Azure as a native Azure resource, enabling consistent governance, automation, and management uh, with those cool Azure tools that we use. The resource bridge facilitates uh, self-service uh, sort of provisioning and lifecycle management of on-premises Windows and Linux virtual machines directly from Azure. So it's that, it's that bridge. I've always said that Azure Arc is like a bridge, and this is essentially that resource bridge is it. It bridges um, that management plane from Azure Act to on-premises, but it's, ho it's hosted on-premises. Uh, continuing on that sort of what is Azure Act. So um, uh, Azure Act really integrates with, with all these different platforms in Azure Local, uh, VMware, and SC uh, VMM as well. So you've got integration with all those on-premises platforms. Uh, so once deployed, uh, in your private cloud, the resource bridge has got your credentials to your sort of local virtualization infrastructure. In our case, it's going to be VMware. And this allows it to project those on-premises resources into Azure as Azure Arc enabled resources. And this projection enables consistent management, as we've mentioned, that automation using those Azure tools, so you can use Azure policies, your CLI, and so on. Arc, the Arc resource bridge enables uh, different hybrid management capabilities, including native Azure experience, which is projects, as we mentioned, uh, on-premise VMs as Azure resources it's going to allow you to view your on-premises VMs in Azure and apply tags, policies, extensions, etc. You've also got the VM self-service from Azure. This currently allows you to create and manage your on-premises through the Azure portal or CLI. And you've got native integration with Azure as well. It's going to extend Azure governance, monitoring and automation capabilities to on-premises. We're going to be playing with all that, not in this episode, but hopefully starting in the next episode as well. Okay, so here's an architecture of how that Azure Arc bridge or ARB looks. Um, this should, there's quite a, quite a lot happening in this video, so let's just try and go through it. So Azure Arc resource bridge is a key component that's going to allow, you to, allow Azure to manage on-premises cloud infrastructure. Uh, supported private clouds uh, are, are VMV series mentioned, which we did in the last episode, SC, VMM, and Azure Local. And it acts as a local appliance VM that's going to connect your private cloud to Azure, enabling Azure to then project and manage those on-premises resources. To deliver this functionality, the resource bridge hosts additional Azure Arc components, including custom location, and we talked about custom location already in this series, and these define the target uh, infrastructure for deployments. Then cluster extensions as well. So cluster extensions are going to enable private cloud capabilities on the resource bridge. Uh, the support sort of private cloud extensions are VMware, SC, VMM, and Azure Local, as you know. And we've got Azure Arc agents as well. So these are the power of communication and control layer between Azure and your infrastructure. Um, so as I said, you can see there's a lot happening in here at the top. We've got all the Azure scalabilities. And then on, on the, the bottom, we've got those private cloud, which is your hosted your on-premises services. And that, you see at the top of that Azure Arc resource bridge at the top of all that, um, kind of bridging that gap um, between your, your ARM resource and your on-premises. Talking now about the benefits of Azure Arc Resource Bridge. So it enables you to manage your on-premises Windows, Linux, virtual machines, as we know, directly from Azure. And depending on the supported private cloud, you may be able to perform 
different VM management operations, including provisioning and deleting VM from the Azure portal, CLI, starting, stopping, restarting virtual machines, controlling access using Azure RBAC and Azure tags, adding, removing, or updating networking, disks, and VM sizes, enabling guest management, but also installing you know, support Azure Arc, VM extensions, like Azure Arc, uh, monitor, and Azure policy as well. Uh, so let's talk about some of the system requirements and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on some network requirements as well. So to onboard Azure Arc Resource Bridge, you must have contributor role uh, or for the resource group. Uh, you need to, to read, modify and delete Arc Resource Bridge, you must have the contributor role for the resource group as well. Um, from a management tool requirements capability perspective, Azure CLI is required to deploy Azure Arc Resource Bridge on supported private cloud environments. If deploying Azure at Resource Bridge on VMware, Azure CLI 64 bit is required to be installed on the management machine to run the deployment of commands. If deployed on Azure Act Local, uh, or Azure CLI 32 bit should be installed on the management machine. And the Azure Act Appliance CLI extension, Arc Appliance, needs to be installed on running the, the command AZ extension add dash dash name Arc Appliance. Let's talk about minimum resource requirements. Uh, Arc Resource Bridge has uh, minimum resource requirements, including you need to have at least 200 gig disk space, four vCPUs, and eight gig of RAM. Uh, and supported storage configuration with hybrid storage, you've got flash and HDD, or all flash storage for SSDs and uh, with NVMEs as well. The minimum requirements enable more scenarios for products and, and users of Arc Resource Bridge, but obviously review the documentation to get more sort of detailed um, minimum requirements. From an IP address prefix subnet requirement, the IP address uh, where the Arc Resource Bridge will be deployed requires a minimum prefix of a slash 29. The IP address prefix must have enough available if, if uh, IP address is for the gateway. Uh, uh, the control IP, the appliance VM IP, reserved appliance VM IP as well needs to be, needs to be allotted in that. Azure Arc Resource Bridge only uses IP addresses assigned to the IP pool range start which includes the start IP and end IP and the control plane IP. And it's rec Microsoft recommend that the end IP immediately follow the start IP. Um, from a static IP configuration, if you deploy Arc Resource Bridge to a production environment, static configuration must be used when deploying as your Arc Resource Bridge. Static, static IP configuration is used to assign three static IPs that are in the same subnet uh, to the Arc Resource Bridge control plane, the appliance VM and the reserved appliance VM as well. The management machine requirements, the, the machine used to run commands to deploy and maintain Arc resource which is called the management machine, um, has to have Azure CLI 64 bit, as we've mentioned. Uh, needs to be able to communicate to a control plane IP through SSH TCP port 22 and Kubernetes API port 6443. Um, needs to have uh, the same access and ports to the appliance VM. IP and it needs to be able to communicate to the reserved appliance VM again on port 22 and port 6443. Um, from an appliance VM IP address, again, very similar, needs to needs to have needs to be able to communicate with the management machine, the private cloud management endpoints as well. Stack assigned IP address is recommended as well. Okay, um, and the, the reserved appliance VM IP and the control plan IP requirements, again, they all need to talk to the appliance VM and Azure. Um, and again, you need to use a static IP with those as well. Okay, let's talk about, before we finish this episode off, let's touch on the sort of more detailed network requirements. So the lowest network bandwidth validated for deployment of a, a Arc resource bridge is 100 megabits per second. If your network bandwidth is, bandwidth is slower, you may experience problems with deployment. Uh, Arc resource bridge communicates outbound secure to Azure Arc over TCP port 443. And if your appliance needs to connect through a firewall or proxy server to communicate over the internet, it can communicate outbound using HTTP protocols. Generally, connectivity requirements include uh, the following principles, which include all connections are TCP unless otherwise specified. All HTTP connections use HTTPS and SSL slash TLS. Uh, with officially signed and variable certificates. All connections are outbound unless otherwise specified. And to use a proxy, verify that the agents and the machine performing the onboarding process meet the network requirements that we've discussed. From an outbound connectivity requirement perspective, the firewall and proxy URLs, uh, 
that, that you can see in the documentation must be allowed in order to enable communication. And if from an inbound communication between, between um, again, if you look at the documentation, there's a certain level, number of ports. Some of them we've already mentioned. They need to be allowed from the management machine, appliance VMs. I think it's uh, port 22 and 6443 uh, and the control plane IP as well. You need to make sure all these ports are open. Um, and a resource, of the ARC resource bridge, uh, Kubernetes pods are on a 10.244.00.16 IP address subnet. And the ARC resource bridge Kubernetes services are on 10.96.00.12 as well. From an SSL proxy configuration perspective, if you're using a proxy, the ARC resource bridge must be configured to use proxy in order to connect to Azure resource services. To convey ARC resource bridge with proxy, you need to provide the proxy certificate file path during that creation of a configuration files as well. Uh, and from an internal port listening perspective, just be aware that the appliance VM is configured to listen on, on different ports, including 8443, uh, 10257, 10250, and 2382 as well. And these are all various things like uh, the endpoint for the Entra authentication webhook, which is 8443. You've got the endpoint for the Arc Resource Bridge metrics, uh, which is 10, uh, which is 10257 and 10250. And you've got 23882, which I mentioned, which is, Arc, which is the endpoint for the Arc Resource uh, Bridge metrics as well. Okay, no, uh, no demo in this episode. We are going to jump back into a demo in the next episode, um, but we've we've covered a lot of ground. I'm, it's quite a, it's quite a, quite an in depth. It's a deep dive series, right? So I've kind of covered what the overview is, but unless you kind of um, unless you're a bit more well versed in Azure, you might struggle with this topic because again, it's for people who know understand Azure and, and they have on-premises as well. You understand on-premises infrastructures and you want to basically bond those together. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Please drop me a comment or a like. And um, for those interested in exam topics, um, I, I am uh, I've done I've done AZ nine hundred and MS nine hundred recently. I've got SC one hundred, SC two hundred. I've got AZ one hundred and four as well. I've got SC100, AZ700, all available to my members. So I've got the members link below. If, you, if you're not a member, but you want to do those sort of topics and uh, have help with your exam prep, I suggest you click the link below in the description and become a member. There's different levels, different perks, um, but I highly recommend those content. They've helped a lot of people pass. Uh, so thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.